Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. The uh, audience for the book is anybody involved in learning and education. So that's a pretty broad, broad group of uh, uh, people. Uh, the book itself focuses on higher education. So that would mean colleges, universities, uh, but actually anybody really involved in questions of education and learning will find value from the book. So industry has a huge investment in training. And so a lot of the principles and ideas in the book would be as relevant to someone running training for industry as it would be for someone who's running a college. The book has a theory portion and has a practice portion. So the theory portion is about what organizational learning contracts mean. It's about uh, how do you measure them. And more important, it's about the results. So if you have strong organizational learning contracts, what difference does it make? What, it's, what is its, its effectiveness? So organizational learning contracts are shared understandings that faculty, students, and staff have about learning. But it's more specific than that. It's about what we're going to learn, how we're going to learn it, when we're going to learn it, why we're going to learn it, and where. So, one might say, well, all universities have that, but let me give you a, a contrasting picture. We, we go to one college or university and we ask students a question about the contract, and we've done that. And what students say, oh, well, coming to college is going to get me a job. It's going to be hard, it's going to be challenging, but that's a very diffuse notion of a contract. We've been in other colleges where they will say, what they're going to learn, and those could be things like quantitative analysis, uh, presentation skills, uh, group process skills, because they're important in working in any company. So they'll have a specific answer to the what question. They'll have a specific answer to the how question, the why question. So it's, there's a difference between a strong contract, which is very explicit, and people know what and where and how they're going to learn, versus the first example I gave you, which was very diffuse. Let's say we have two universities or colleges and we say, well, what do you want people to learn? And they'll say, oh, presentation skills are important because when you go to work, you need to be able to communicate effectively. So in one organization, they both say that, but in one organization, they have a class for presentation skills. In the other organization, they have a class for presentation skills, but they have five to ten specific instances where people will practice presentation skills in very different classes. And every time they do it, they're going to get, it's going to be measured what they do, they're going to get feedback in terms of what they, what they how, how well they're doing, and uh, most important, there'll be a way to redesign how they're doing that. So, Learning is occurring over multiple cases, and, and that would be an example of a strong learning contract. Taking a course in presentation skills, with all due respects, is not going to have a major impact. The first thing we learn is that it is possible to build these contracts, which means that all the students and others know what they're going to learn, how they're going to learn, and they know that actually, in many cases, before they even get to the institution. So there's a lot of socialization efforts before you even walk in the door, and then it's reinforced uh, throughout. So first thing we want to do is to see, does the contract, can we measure it, and does it exist? And the answer to that is yes. The second question uh, is, are these contracts being met? So as a university or a college, I can create a contract, but the question is, do I deliver? And that's a very important question because the more you have a strong contract, 
the more explicit the deal is. And the more explicit the deal is, it's easier to see whether you've met the contract or violated the contract. So that's the risk in building high contracts now, or very differentiated contracts. Now what we've found is that the institutions that build them know that, and they know there's a risk, and so what they do is to uh, uh, be sure that the contract is delivered. So once it's delivered, there are some interesting kind of uh, spin-offs. So uh, first of all, students' attitudes are very different. They have very positive attitudes about the teachers, the learning environment, uh, and other things like that. They're more engaged. There's a lot of literature that shows engagements related to learning. The more students are engaged, the more they're going to learn. We have data that shows that learning occurs, but also transfer of learning occurs. So that's a really important point. In many ways, I define learning in terms of the ability to transfer. So there's a difference between learning in, in, in college and using it in college, then going to industry as an intern and taking some of the things you've learned and transferring them. So there's evidence that people with strong contracts are more able to transfer what they've learned to a setting. So that's a benefit to the students, also uh, a benefit uh, to the company. How do you learn? And how do you think about learning? Now that's, a, that's a, actually a critical question because the world is changing at an ever rapid rate and that's clearly true in business. And so what you've learned in 2011 may not be as relevant five or ten years from now. So this notion about knowing how to learn is really important. So another finding is that people with strong contracts are actually have more differentiated models about how to learn. There are some important ideas in the book that uh, I think are relevant and the, uh, one of the basic challenges in any of the developing economies outside the U.S. is the supply of well-trained people who can make industry work. And I've been involved in both Latin America and India uh, in helping build institutions that are related to that challenge of the imbalance between supply and demand. And what I would argue is that some of the basic ideas of the book are really relevant, particularly in these developing economies, because one of the problems is there are excellent institutions, but the population uh, and the number of people that are getting educated doesn't fit into these kind of institutions. Or the other simple way to say it is that the demand for technically educated people and the supply is really imbalanced. And so what's going to happen, and I've actually seen it happening, is you're going to see new educational institutions in these developing economies coming up and becoming important players in the educational market. And so from my perspective, and I'm involved in two or three of these in different countries, is that the book is a powerful guide. It's a useful guide if you have the opportunity to design a new university. You don't just want to copy what other people have done uh, with other universities. You want to ask the fundamental question, if I have an opportunity to design a new institution, how am I going to do it differently? The book addresses that.